Hey gang, welcome back. In today's video, I want to show you something that I just found in my storage unit. I made this about five years ago when I was living on an island in the Bahamas. What you see here is a lead acid battery charger. It has an output up to five amps. It can be modified to be much higher or much lower. And it was built mostly from scrap that I found at the dump. When you live on an out island, there are very few stores that have chargers around and usually they only have one or two so if you needed to buy one, the odds are they wouldn't have one, or they would be extremely expensive. So it was much easier for me to go to the dump, look for an AC system to salvage some parts from, as well as an LED TV. The only thing that I did for this video was take the entire circuit, place it inside this Walmart shaker tumbler, and by doing that, it makes it extremely safe to handle. Even though this charger works extremely well, there are safety concerns when using this charger. If you do not observe the safety precautions, which I'll be discussing in a minute, you can end up in one of these right over here. I suggest you do not skip through this video if you have any interest in making what I'm about to show you. The lead acid battery charger you see here is a capacitive charger. It does not use a transformer to create a lower voltage output to charge the battery. A run capacitor, which is oil filled, is used to limit the current flowing into the battery. And the one that's inside here looks like what you see right over here. Let me go over the circuit, show you how it's put together, then we'll take a look at the inside of this one, and then I'm going to take it outside and give you a quick demonstration. Okay, here's your 120 volt AC input. H is the hot or black wire, and N is the neutral or white wire. Now if you look at a cord over here in this image, you're going to see that this plug is polarized and the purpose of that is to ensure that the hot and neutral are in the correct place when the plug is inserted into the receptacle. The wider blade is the neutral and you can see right over here that there are ridges running down the wire that identifies the neutral side and the other side of the plug has a blade that's not as wide and that's the hot side and you can see the side of the wire is very smooth. Over here, you're going to have the smooth side of the wire, and over here is gonna be the wire with the ridges. The reason why we use an oil-filled run capacitor is because we wanna be able to restrict the flow of current without generating heat like a resistor. So a 100 microfarad capacitor at 60 Hertz has a resistance that would be equivalent to a 25 ohm resistor. These capacitors are usually in a 370 to 440 volt range, and you must use a run capacitor that is oil filled. Do not use one of these capacitors here. It's a start capacitor. It will explode if continuous current is applied. The oil filled capacitors are designed to be left in circuit. Now this is going to have an effective output between four and five amps of current into your 12 volt battery. If you would like to have a 10 amp charger, you would make this 200 microfarads. And if you'd like a one amp charger for a very small battery, like a scooter or a jet ski, then you would reduce this value all the way down to 20 to 25 microfarads. That would give you approximately a one amp charging output. In all my years of working on AC systems, I've never seen a run capacitor that actually went short circuit. And by that I mean, if you look at the two terminals on top of a capacitor, it's just like having a wire connected between them and no longer having any capacitance. That very rarely happens. What usually happens, the value gets lower and lower, and then the capacitor becomes open circuit. Now it's very important that you have overcurrent protection. You want to keep it around 25 to 50% higher than the current that's going to be flowing. So if we're going to be using up to 5 amps, try and use a 7 amp fuse. You could go as high as 10 but I would not recommend going higher. In the event this capacitor goes short circuit, what's going to happen, the fuse will immediately blow, preventing an unlimited amount of current flowing into that battery. Now across this capacitor is a one mega ohm, one watt resistor. You can go as low as 270K, just increase the wattage to two watts. The purpose of that is when power is removed from the circuit, it's going to bleed down this capacitor removing the charge. Now in order to take this alternating current input, what we have to do is convert it to direct current, and that's the purpose of a bridge rectifier. The one that's used inside this unit was removed from an LED TV, 
and you can see it right over here. The one I have is rated up to 8 amps. I really did not have to use a heat sink on it, but I did apply one, which you'll see in a minute. And the output is going to be DC pulses. So if you look at this picture right over here, you're going to see that the AC line or the AC input is going to have a sine wave with positive and negative peaks. The purpose of this full wave bridge rectifier is to invert the negative peaks and make them all positive so it looks like what you see at the bottom of this image. The good thing about the output of this charger being pulsed, it also helps to break up sulfation inside lead acid batteries, which results in increased capacity. Now this over here is not absolutely necessary, but I did add it across the output. What it is, it's a neon lamp, 120 volt, with a current limiting or drop resistor. And the purpose of that is when this is connected to a lead acid battery, you connect the clamps first before you do anything, and then you plug it in. When you plug it in, if that lamp illuminates, it's going to indicate you don't have a good connection with the clamps at the battery. In that case, you would unplug, readjust the clamps, and then plug it back in, and then the neon lamp should be off. When this charger is plugged in with nothing connected, this will rise up to around 115 or 120 volts. Once a load is applied, the battery, the voltage will never be anywhere near 115, but you will see the voltage of your battery start to climb fairly quickly. Under no circumstances do you go anywhere near these clamps while the unit is plugged in. Always unplug first and then remove the clamps. I've used this in the past, leaving it connected to a vehicle with no problem, but I would highly suggest you disconnect the positive of the battery before connecting this to a vehicle. So leave the negative connected, which is the reverse of how you would normally do it, because we're going to have the high voltage coming in right over here. So you want to disconnect that positive connection on your battery and have this go to the post directly. Then you can leave the negative connected, take the black clamp and connect it onto the post. While charging is taking place, you're going to monitor the voltage at this point using a digital multimeter on DC volts. When you see the voltage rise to around 14, or 14.25 volts, you're going to unplug the cord, remove the clamps, put the positive clamp back on the battery, turn on your engine and let it idle for a few minutes so the computer can relearn a few settings. If you try removing the battery on a newer vehicle, you may lose many settings causing a lot of problems. So I would suggest that you use an OBD port battery backup like you see right here. I show how I made this in another video. And then what that's going to do is keep the computer settings saved so you don't have to worry about losing anything. Okay, let me open up the unit that I have, show you the inside, and then we're going to take it outside and I'll give you a quick demonstration. Here you can see the inside, how I did it. Nylon ties so you cannot pull the wires out of the shaker bottle. And you can see the heat sink that's bolted to the bridge rectifier. First I'm going to show you how this will light up when the clamps are not connected to anything. And right there. You can see it's on. Now what I'm going to do is show you the voltage of this battery first. Then I'm going to disconnect this clamp, the positive, and then hook up the charger. Okay, let's take a look at the voltage of the battery right now. And it's right around 12.61. Going to connect this clamp to the negative. Take the negative from the tester, connect it also onto that clamp. Take the positive, connect it to the positive along with the test lead. Okay, now I'm going to take the cord from the charger and plug it in. And here you can see the voltage rising. You can also observe that the light is not on. Okay, let me unplug this for a minute. I'm going to connect the meter in series to measure how much current. Okay, the meter is connected up now to measure DC current, 10 amp setting. Keep in mind this battery does have a pretty good charge, so not as much current is going to be flowing from the charger into the battery. Here we go. 
And you can see we're almost three and a half amps, 3.43 flowing through that battery. And that's it guys, it works extremely well. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate thumbs up, share, and check out my extensive video playlist for other videos of interest to you. Thank you very much for watching.